Hindustan Ambassador. It's built in Calcutta at the rate of 50,000 units a year. Now, if you think it bears more than a passing resemblance to the 1956 Morris Oxford, of course, you're right. In 1959, Lord Nuffield gave the Hindustan Company the exclusive rights to build this car. Now, little could he have thought that 33 years later, the British motor industry would be assembling Japanese cars and the Morris Oxford would be coming back into Britain, courtesy of the Indians. No one ever pretended that the original Morris Oxford was the ultimate in performance or road holding. After all, it had a, a 1.5 litre engine developing around 50 brake horsepower and it had over a tonne of metal to lug around. This car, however, is fitted with the optional 1.8 litre Isuzu Japanese engine. That develops 88 brake horsepower. It's a case of 90s engine technology and 50s chassis design. And it could conceivably get you into trouble with the drum brakes all round and the rather indifferent dampers. You find yourself barreling into roundabouts and bends at embarrassingly high speeds. That said, the ride comfort of this car is exceptionally good and it covers distances surprisingly well. Another endearing aspect of Ambassador ownership is the sheer degree of commitment it demands from the owner. Apart from all these acres of paintwork and chrome to polish, there's a, a petrifying maintenance schedule in the back of the owner's handbook. Some of the grease nipples, remember grease nipples, demand attention from the grease gun every 900 miles. So if you're the type who likes to spend his Sundays underneath the car, this is the model for you. At the end of the day, it's a great example of all that is best in British engineering against the competition from Skoda and Lada. Now, the prospective importers of the Ambassador say this is exactly how the car comes out of the Calcutta showroom, hence no seat belts, no heater and no ashtray. Cars for the British market will have all these items as standard when they're built on a special export line at the factory. Another familiar car from a location in unfamiliar surroundings is Volkswagen's ubiquitous Beetle. This one comes straight out of Mexico City, and it's an unusual combination of parts from the Volkswagen bin. It's the familiar 1600cc four-cylinder engine with an ultra-modern catalytic converter and yet the old dynamo instead of an alternator. This bright green ballcock affair is apparently to compensate for driving at high altitudes in Mexico. Showroom price around £4,000. Of course, you've got to get yourself to Mexico, buy the car and then personally import it into Britain. That'll cost you about £3,000. If you want to save yourself the trouble, you can buy it from a UK importer for about £10,000. Of course, you've still got a left hooker. The people who sell this car say they'll convert it to right-hand drive for around £1,200. That sounds rather a lot when VW specialists will tell you it's a very easy conversion. It's the whole Beetle driving experience which generates so much nostalgia amongst former owners and so much enthusiasm in current ones. Although it's no ball of fire, it'll maintain 80 miles an hour flat out all day and it's quite nippy in town. Noise levels in a Beetle were always high with the flat four engine in the back, but one thing I'd forgotten about the car was the almost total absence of wind noise. They knew more about aerodynamics pre-war than perhaps we gave them credit for. It's still a car that keeps the driver on his toes, especially in long-distance journeys. When you're overtaking lorries in a crosswind, it can almost swap lanes unless you're very quick with steering correction. On its original narrow cross-by tyres, Beetle handling could give you palpitations, especially on wet roads, but on modern radials, the Mexican Beetle handles well. And as for the image, it's stronger today than ever. As it gets older, the drivers get younger.